Hey everyone! Welcome back to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. In the last episode, we were having a great time over on Lake Atitlan, Indeed. Guatemala. Hippies. <laughs> it was wonderful. We had a great stay. It was real nice. And we met up with two friends, motorcycle travelers, uh, Greg and Jess Stone, and they have founded Go Roughly, mm -hmm. which is their company. It's um, ethical stuff that's for dogs, outdoor gear for dogs that uh, is made by local Guatemalan women. And we met up with them. They were living in Panajachel, which is the main city by uh, Lake Atitlan. And as one last hurrah, uh, in that area, they invited us to go to the highlands of Guatemala. The Alteplano. Yes, in an area around the town of Huehuetenango, which is just a cool name to say. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, I don't even attempt to say any of these names, but they're like, come with us to Rara Ra, and I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it. So um, we had a great time just following them around. They'd been there before, and uh, we all booked a night at a place called Unicornio Azul, which is in the mountains even higher than Huehuetenango. Yeah, and Unicornio Azul means blue unicorn. Yeah, like great name. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> He's not a fan of unicorns, let alone blue ones. Right, and they have horses there. It's kind of like a countryside setting. Yeah. Um, but we had really no idea what we were getting into. And they told us it's going to be cold because these are the highlands of Guatemala. But we've been traveling in Guatemala now for quite a while, yeah. and everything I had seen was quite hot. Hot and humid. And it's That's like, right. Oh, I can't wait for it to be a little bit colder. Yeah, yeah. I was excited. I was like, well, ooh, a fresh, crisp breeze. This will be great. And there were no lessons learned having lived in Chicago our entire lives, and when it's hot, be like, oh, I can't wait till it's colder now. Yeah. It's like, you know. <laughs> March and it's like, oh, I can't wait for spring. Why would I ever wish upon us? But we were in Guatemala. It wasn't like the seasons were going to change like that. I mean, yeah. I just had hot and this will be a cold area for Guatemalans, right? We're from Chicago, though. We yeah. were going to be fine. But it turned out to be a lot colder than I expected. Well, I mean, it was a beautiful ride there. It was. <laughs> last portion of it right outside you pass through where where don't tell me and then <laughs> like you just cruise up this this mountainside yeah. it's not even it's not like insanely sharp switchbacks or anything but you you know you majestically go you know up this long road then it turns Beautiful. and you go up and up and up and you can just like you know it takes your breath away on multiple reasons because i mean the air just gets thin and it's like wow yeah. how far up are we going this is crazy
So it goes up to where Unicornio Azul is. It goes up to 9,800 feet, mm -hmm. almost 10,000 feet. Yeah, I'm a big fan of rounding up. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's cold up there. It was, it was windy and yeah. it was cold. By the time we got to the Mirador, it was a lookout area with a statue and a monument built for Juan Diegues de Oliver, no. Juan, Juan Diegues de, de Oliveri. Oliveri. You're messing it Whatever, up. Whatever, <laughs> I nailed it. I was helping you. Juan Diegues Oliveri. And he is a famous poet from Guatemala. And so this lookout was dedicated to him. And it was beautiful, but it was windy. Yes. But a gorgeous Hard to write view. poetry at that altitude with that much wind. So just... <laughs> Poetry the is all wind about. It was wind is strong <laughs> against my soul. But on the way there, there uh, were a lot of fires. So oh, yeah. they have um, this tradition of kind of slash and burn there in Guatemala where they'll clear a field for agriculture by burning it. Yeah, and I mean, not only that though, but when we were on Lake Atitlan, uh, Fuego or whatever, yeah. like forest fires on top of the mountains at the tree line level happened when the lava flow hit some, and we would see that in the distance, yes. and we're like, wow, there's like We would see fire. people burning things all the time, and a lot of times those fires got out of control. Yeah. So um, I understand the practice of burning things can be um, really good for the environment. Well, and we do that in the States, too, just to try mm -hmm. to control if anything gets crazy. So there's, right. you know, but out agriculturally, they do it. Um, they try to do make firewalls and stuff. Rah, rah. But yeah. like when in the States and we're from Chicago, so that doesn't happen all that often. But when mm -hmm. we see like pictures in uh, uh, Cali and stuff when they're trying to make, you know, bald spots on the earth so the fire can't get through mm -hmm. you know it's very well controlled there's like you know right. well, firemen with we have the manpower and yeah. the technology to do that yeah and like when we went through the small town we had to stop it first because the fire was just consuming the street it was and it was bad it was badly out of control yeah and it was like an hour we had to wait mm -hmm. and it was just a smoke Right, and so I wasn't all too excited just to ride into whatever hell's yeah. wrath this was. Yeah. But after an hour went by, they're like, well, it's it's technically safe to go through. And we're like, okay, okay here Let's we go. go. And like, as we're going through, it was just like a fallout from a movie. these people on the side of the road with just bandanas and like all they were doing they were just like trying to pat it out like that's what they were all they had were shovels it was crazy patting the fire out like or they didn't digging have hoses and, yeah. yeah they really were not well equipped to deal with this fire they didn't have masks or yeah. anything just those bandanas i felt really bad yeah for and them. speaking of like controlled fire so like when we were in the wild coast of south oh, africa yeah they they do it too and it's like small shrubbery but mm -hmm. like it just burns in like these progressing like lines yeah. which is to an extent you know like it's kind of cool looking mm -hmm. right you know and we were coming from we had just gone and see like the condors or something yeah some, on the wild coast yeah beautiful birds in this cliffed area then we were riding back and here's one of those fire lines and you know like it's hard to judge what's on the other side, right? But I was yeah. figuring, you know, we're, we're going, we got some speed and you're it's going like down. It's like a wall of smoke. It's a wall of smoke and you're on like just a two tracked, you know, going through, you know, it's not like a major road of like asphalt or anything. Yeah. And I just gunned it through.
was pretty lucky. I mean, in general, it's not recommended to ride. We this don't fire. ride into a lot of fires. <laughs> we've done it twice, and we've just mentioned them both. Yeah, those are those are the yeah. two times so far. Um, hopefully, we don't have to ride through too many more fires. Yeah. But it is a scary experience, just all that smoke, and then when you see oh, you the can't flames breathe, through you can't, it. Yeah, it was not. And like people in cars, they have windows, you know, and, and, and they can still only yeah. imagine they get all choked up. But like we have our helmets on, and there's no like airlock, and so it's just your eyes are watering. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like I don't know. I played a lot of video games as a as a kid, and into my adulthood. But like. <laughs> You know, when they show, like, all these, you know, aftermath of Fallout, you know, rah, rah, yeah. and they have, like, these little particles floating in the air, like, oh, you know. Right. <laughs> and, I mean, that's just what this, it was just like we yeah. entered, you know, the first layer of Dante's Inferno. Right. There were all these pieces of ash and soot yeah. just floating through the air like that, like it was snowing soot. Yeah. Um, pretty freaky in a lot of ways, but uh, we survived. We, we passed did. through. And headed on up the okay, mountain up the side. Panel. Yes. of Guatemala are quite cold and very different from other parts of Guatemala and we stayed at this place Unicornio Azul and by the time we got up there there was a little bit of off-road section yeah. which at the time I was quite nervous about but you were a pro and it was beautiful like, yeah I'm a pro and but by the time I got there I was cold <laughs> I was like yeah. wow this is a lot colder than I had expected. Well, and then we dropped the, uh, cause Greg and Jess, and then it was me and Marissa, and then the girls wanted to like shower and do stuff, and I wanted to just unload the bike, and there was some of that off-road that we had done, oh, yeah. two up and overloaded, and then I wanted to mess around with Greg, just on like a kind of a lighter bike without my wife and rah rah and so we were just zipping and zanging around <laughs> and it was it was it was real fun <laughs> stuff and you know we came back and I was really really excited um, and I was glad I wasn't there and she was glad <laughs> she wasn't there but uh you know we went to sleep yeah and I it mean, was really really cold so there's just layers upon layers of like wool blanket blankets. I mean it was heavy how many blankets they had on that bed yeah. they're well equipped for the cold there you can yeah. tell that they deal with it every single day um, and they even gave us like a really warm yeah like a water bottle oh. A water bladder. Uh, a hottie a hot <laughs> that you can tea. sleep with. <laughs> yeah. I sleep with a hottie every night. I think they're called hotties in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a water bottle filled up with very hot water that you can have with you as you sleep. And they have wood stoves. Um, they yeah. have really nice meals there. It's one of those places where um, they prepare food for you when you get there. And uh, just those hearty soups that really warmed me up so we had a fantastic time there. yeah it was great um, and it was a definite change from the Guatemala that we had seen previous 
obviously. Yeah. From there, we headed back down the mountain well, and back to Lake Atitlan. The, the next morning, we woke up and we pack all the gear on my bag, and, or all the, the, the gear on the bike, and, you know, and we're, it's cold and we can't wait to get down altitude and this and another thing. Yeah. But in my little primitive brain, like the last time I was on my motorcycle, I was in like, ying, ying, ying mode, like, <laughs> wee, 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 wee. Oh, yeah. you know, and some Rissa jumps on, on and like, I just gun it and I'm like, la, 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 and she slaps him up. I was like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh yeah. I can't ride like that while you're on. I totally forgot, but. Yeah, it is interesting the difference in how you ride when I'm on versus when I'm off. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate the care you take to know that you have this precious cargo, as you say, on the back of the bike. Yeah, so, our computers. Um, but yeah, that one moment when you forgot. <laughs> I keep on cracking jokes and you don't even get them. I said I sleep with a hottie every night and you're just like, blah, 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 in Australia, they call them hotties. Oh. You're my hottie. Oh. I didn't get it. I hope it. some of the people out there get my <laughs> stupid jokes. But so yes, we rode back towards Lake Atatlan. And that was going to be the end of our time at Lake Atitlan. And we said our goodbyes to Greg and Jess. We would see them in the future. Dun, 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 dun. But we headed back to Antigua, which is where Phil and Sepna, our other traveling motorcycle friends. Yeah, they had an Airbnb and they invited yes. us to stay with them. And I was like, oh, yeah. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. But as we headed to Antigua, this is one of the most unforgettable rides that we had in Central America because the sun was setting. In general, we tried to ride only during the day because it takes a while to find accommodations that night yeah. and you don't want to be driving at night or riding at night, I should say. But um, we knew where we were going to stay that night. And so uh, we cut it kind of short. The sun was setting, but it was a beautiful sunset, purple skies. And then you had those volcanoes right around Antigua, just like huge cones right in front of us. with Phil and Sepna, A, because they're awesome buddies and we love them to death, but B, 
we were heading into El Salvador and Honduras and we knew mm -hmm. it would be a good time to regroup strength and numbers and rah rah. So they're they're just they're awesome, awesome people. Yeah. And they invited us into their little Airbnb and I, I think we stayed a couple nights. I think so too. It was and kind of like a last their, hurrah for Guatemala. Yeah, they had a rooftop little viewing yeah. you know, that you can see again that, that the volcanoes mm -hmm. and a beautiful view of Antigua. It has all those terracotta tile roofs yeah. um, from the Spanish colonial buildings and it is very quaint and very beautiful. And that was, yeah, that ride to Weiwei Tenango, then the ride to the volcanoes in Antigua, and that stay in Antigua was kind of like a final goodbye yeah. to Guatemala for us right before we headed to El Salvador and Honduras. Indeed. And that's going to be what our next episode is about. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we will be seeing you next time. Peace, everybody. Bye. Stay safe.